If you have any information pertaining to this case, please contact the County of Los Angeles Department of the Medical Examiner at 323-343-0512. Between 4.15 and 4.30 a.m. on the 3rd of June 1978, a young male was found lying face down on the ground at Division Street in Long Beach, Los Angeles County, California. He was pronounced dead at the scene and it appeared as if his body had been dumped at the site of discovery from an auto. The investigators' first thoughts were that he had probably died of an accidental drug overdose, but the autopsy revealed otherwise. The autopsy determined that the young man had been strangled to death in a homicide, and he'd been dead for less than 24 hours. The victim was a Caucasian or Hispanic male between 15 and 19 years old, who stood between 5 feet 7 inches and 5 feet 11 inches tall, and weighed between 120 and 145 pounds. He had brown hair that extended just below his ears, hazel eyes, a fair complexion, a scar above his right eyebrow, and the word paid had been stamped on the back of his right hand. He was found wearing a size 42 to 44 blue t-shirt, blue Levi brand jeans, a brown belt, blue socks, and blue and white Red Wings brand running shoes with brown soles. There are a couple of theories about what happened to this decedent, which I will get into now. I must preface this by saying that none of these theories have been proven. They are all pure speculation and should not be taken as fact. Because of the paid stamp on the back of his hand, many have thought it likely that the young man went to a club shortly before his death. A popular club in the area at that time was a gay bar called Ripples, which is about four blocks away from where the unidentified male was found. The owner of Ripples was contacted by a Web Sleuths user in 2012, who asked if they had used a paid stamp in 1978. The owner responded, saying that he could not remember whether they ever used such stamps. He did also say that the deceased man may have been a customer in 1978, but he wasn't positive about this. If he did go to a club, be it Ripples or not, he may have met his killer at that club, or shortly after he left. Others have theorised that perhaps the decedent was a victim of serial killer Randy Stephen Kraft. Kraft is thought to have been active from 1971 to 1983, and has been convicted of 16 murders, though he may have committed up to 67. Most of his victims were young Caucasian males in their late teens or early twenties. Kraft operated in the area where the unidentified male was found, and he was allegedly known to visit the Ripples Club. However, Kraft is known for torturing, mutilating and sexually assaulting his victims before strangling them, and there has been no mention of trauma to the unidentified male's body. He was found within hours of his murder, so it would not be difficult to tell whether he had been tortured or not. There is also no mention of him being sexually assaulted, and he was found fully clothed, unlike most of Kraft's victims. Kraft also heavily drugged his victims, and there has been no mention of any drugs or alcohol in the unidentified male system. All in all, it's certainly possible that he was a Randy Craft victim, but I personally don't think it much likely. Forty years later, we still do not know the identity of this young man, and his killer may still walk free. Several missing people have been officially ruled out as being this decedent. Please check the description for a list of these rule-outs. If you have any information that may aid in the identification of this decedent and or his murderer, check the beginning of this video again for the appropriate agencies to contact.